hear that? I heard that. Was it you? Shh, no, dude, that was a f***ing giant tree that just came down over there. Last January was my first time exploring the wilds of South Florida. We had set out on an expedition into this area in search of the skunk ape. Since then, I've been fascinated with this place. The environments found here are unlike those elsewhere, whether it be between the sawgrass prairies, the cypress trees, palmettos, or the constant flow of water beneath you. This is a place that supports a rich variety of interesting creatures like the Florida panther, black bears, alligators, snakes, and much more. Naturally, I felt the need to return to South Florida and explore it once again. Exactly a year after the initial visit, that's exactly what I did. There is nearly 2.5 million acres of protected land in South Florida. That's roughly three times the size of the state of Rhode Island. Spread between Everglades National Park, Big Cypress Preserve, the Florida Panther Wildlife Refuge, the Fakahatchee Strand Forest, and Picayune Strand Forest, an impossible task to thoroughly explore. So our approach was somewhat simple. Spending a few days and nights in some areas of interest, both in Big Cypress National Preserve and the Picayune Strand Forest. LED light bars. I'll flip those on real quickly. Yeah, let's check it out. So the switches for those light bars are right here by my feet. So I just flip those switches and then um, they turn on like that. So what's it. the idea? I mean we have these lights here on the front of the Jeep. Yeah. And obviously this area there's a, quite a few sightings of skunk apes crossing roads. There's other animals that have been seen crossing roads. Do you think this is a good tool to maybe go look for critters just alongside the road, kind of cross anything like that? It's good because it it'll light up the road for sure. It, yeah. You'll be able to see a lot further than just your regular headlights. Because um, these, you could always turn these out to the side. Oh, that's true. We could more where you could see out further, so it's a straight shot. So instead of using a flashlight, you got these. Yeah, we could turn these out on the side and just have this guy on the front if something were to cross. Exactly. So just that keep it on. Yeah. That's good because you can, and they go up or down. That's cool. So you can angle it, and the same thing with the front. You can angle it up or down a little bit. Nice. Yeah, let's do it. That sounds like a cool way to just cruise around for a little bit. If you're really good fans of the show, then you would know that I used to have a Honda Ridgeline. This is the new Squatch Field. This is the new mascot of Beyond the Trail. This car. Because it was the original. You know how many times that thing's been yeah. in like every shot? Yeah, another thing we're going to try here at some point is taking the soft top off of the Jeep here and just ha you can have somebody sitting up there or even just with the thermal just scanning sideways and have it hooked up to a phone 
so you don't have to be sticking your head out as the wind's kind of blowing in your face. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of really cool things we can do just from the vehicle. Obviously, this is not the end-all be-all, but given so many sightings happen, our that happen are accidental road crossing sightings. I mean, this Especially topic here. That, oh, that's the, that's the case here. You know, vast well, majority of Bigfoot sightings around the country are road, road crossing. Yeah. yeah. So this is just a cool way to kind of, you know, on a day like we just got here today, we didn't have time to hike into somewhere. So. Well, okay. Well, what's nice about this is this is the second time we've been here. I've been coming out here since over the summer, so we're kind of hitting the ground running. Yeah. Whereas last year we'd never been here before, yeah. So we didn't know where we should go. Well, we had, you know, we had last year at this spot we're about to go to. We're gonna go walk down a little bit of a trail here. We had heard this wood knock that sounded almost identical to one that Tate had done within a minute of, within two minutes of him actually doing that knock. Uh, previous to that we had found some kind of what looked like a footprint some kind of strange print it, impression it, on the ground it was hard to tell it was weird it was weird looking yeah like it was it was interesting this one that doesn't look like a boot though it's weird man it's not, it's the size is black if i was to press in it just it's very but i don't like if it was a boot you would see imprint that there's that one and that one in the front that are really okay look look at the one in the front though I mean, it's like well within, that's like almost the size of my boot right but now. But the thing is, look. Yeah, it doesn't leave marks though. Like that did. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to be rocking the Pulsar Thermal. But I'm actually going to take this monopod and have it on there. And this way I'm able to get increased or added stability. Which I think will be really nice. This guy right on there. Just about eye level. Now I can obviously make adjustments, but now if I were to see anything, I could very easily just kind of post up with the monopod. Just stab it in the ground, get some really good stability if we were to happen to see anything. So no more of that shaky kind of thermal footage with the handheld because it's tough since this is sort of cropped and zoomed in. So I think this will be Something good to just kind of keep trying moving forward. Check this out, right? See, see the gators? Uh, no. You don't see the eye shine? Oh, there's one right there. So when I film them with the thermal, I can see the humps, like their eyes sticking out, but they don't show up oh. as... They do not show up as like a heat signature. Oh, there we go. Actually, I'm filming a gator now. Oh, sick. This gator right there. See him? See the back of his humps? His eyes are just barely glowing. So it's just barely, you can just barely see him on the therm. The other ones, they're just showing up as like these little bumps.
we're not really getting much, so I guess we just walk out with lights on and see if we get anything, I guess, you know? So I just something thinking about here as we're walking back. Area like this, as thick as some parts are, I mean, you do have these prairies, wide open, it's flat. You get the feeling if something Sasquatch-like, skunk-ape-like were possibly down here. I don't know, you know, even in a tree stand like this where there's all these trees, I'd be able to pierce through there with the thermal. Would this thing want to even get close enough to us to be within visual distance? I'm not sure. That's something kind of just I'm thinking about now, as opposed to, let's say, somewhere in a more mountainous region where you can have giant boulders or hills or hollers in between, easier to maneuver and use the terrain to your advantage. Here, you probably got to be a lot more strategic about where you are, where you're positioned. I mean, you can't move away as quickly because maybe there's water, so you can make a lot more noise. I don't know. Virtually all the sightings that I'm aware of down here in the Everglades have happened where somebody did not expect it. There's almost no... I mean, that's the vast majority of Bigfoot sightings in general, but the ones from here, Collier County, Monroe County, basically Big Cypress area, it's all either unexpected road crossings, ran out in front of the car, they saw it while they were, one guy, he was just shooting his gun and kind of turned around and saw this thing behind him in the woods. All these very unexpected sightings. Okay, so we've come across this track, I don't know if you can see it, see it on the camera? Yeah. Very clear toes, one, two, three, four, five, see that indent right there, clearly a human footprint. No doubt, I mean, size-wise, very tiny, but it just goes to show that somebody is out here walking barefoot in an area where you've got rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, alligators, all these other Python. Pythons. Pythons. So somebody is walking out here barefoot, you can see other print right here. So it just goes to show that even in a place like this, people are walking barefoot, which I find kind of crazy. I wouldn't do that, but again, this is a trail, so a little more understandable, I suppose, but... Oh, there's yeah, another you, one. You can see that's pretty clear. And this one, you can see the toe grip. Yep, so. Yeah? You could definitely tell the difference between a squatch print and a human print. Well, look at how scrunched up the toes are. That's. Yeah, because a squatch. You, know, you talk to Jeff Meldrum or others that talk about how wearing shoes splayed. all our lives yeah. scrunches those toes up. Yeah, so. But hey, you know, it's kind of interesting to see that. Crazy people. That's like really clear. There's like tons of fish in there. Yeah. Well, that was a kind of a fun jaunt just going through the area right now. What we're going to do is we're going to put the top down on the Jeep here. All right, so we've got the camera now outside over the top of the Jeep. We took the soft top off. So what I can do is I can have it on the monopod and kind of move it around up here. And then I'm gonna mo I can monitor it from my phone for hit record, do all that kind of stuff. So all I really have to do is just have this pointed out and hit record as we're driving and see something interesting we can always stop it's kind of nice you're a little bit mobile will it be effective i don't know i guess we're about to find out Driving slow, we have managed to find something. I don't know what it is, it's just some kind of critter in there. If it's a critter, it's something giving off a heat signature, whatever it is. Well, our method appears to have been successful. Using our screen here, we've been able to locate, we found what appeared to be a sleeping bird and filmed it in the tree, so. This method definitely is effective if something is closer to the road, so that's kind of neat. That's it. With limited areas we could access via Jeep and Big Cypress, ultimately we decided to head to areas west to 
check out the massive Picayune Strand Forest, which has a history of skunk ape reports. We made a few stops along the way. While stopping by the Big Cypress National Preserve headquarters, we coincidentally met a man who had a few strange encounters in the Pacific Northwest, including finding his footprint on a trail in the Oregon Cascades. It's a small world when it comes to Sasquatch. After leaving the preserve, we headed south for Everglades City, which lies not far off of the Gulf of Mexico. So we just drove about 10 minutes south of Ochopee, and we're basically right at the ocean here. So it's, there's mangroves here. It's actually really crazy how close we are to Big Cypress, to the area that supports panthers and bears and deer, supposedly skunk apes, all these other animals. And you've got those hardwood hammock forests. You've got just that whole area, how different it looks. This feels like we're in the Caribbean all of a sudden. The reason we took the quick detour down there was a rumor of a skunk ape photo on display at a local restaurant. We managed to locate the photo, which turned out to be part of a newspaper clipping from 1997 hanging on the wall. I had seen this photo before online. It was one of only a few handfuls of examples of alleged skunk ape photos or videos. The story behind the photo itself is as follows. In July of 1997, Ochopee Fire Chief Vince Dore was driving near Big Cypress and witnessed a six to seven foot tall, hairy man-like creature cross the road up ahead from him. He stopped and managed to get this photo of the creature as it retreated into the woods. He has been on record stating that he did not believe in the skunk ape until after his sighting that day. Interestingly enough, just minutes before that incident, on the same day and very close by, a local real estate agent named Jan Brock reported the same type of creature running out in front of her car. This also came only a couple weeks after a nearby mass sighting in which a passenger bus filled with dozens of people driving through the preserve witnessed a large, red-haired, bipedal creature. It is a curious and inconclusive photograph, as are these stories, which now occurred over 25 years ago. So onward we went, in search of contemporary evidence or clues about the skunk ape. The Picayune Strand Forest is located to the west of Big Cypress and borders the 75,000 acre Fakahatchee Strand Forest. The Picayune Forest itself is 74,000 acres and just a few miles east of Naples, Florida. The forest is essentially the western extent of the Everglades. This area is not an old growth forest, but rather secondary growth. It was completely logged during the mid 20th century and set to be developed into residential communities. What was going to be called the Golden Gate Estates never came into fruition. Scandal surrounded the project, with it being deemed a scam, many people feeling they had been tricked into buying useless swampland they had never personally seen. The land in the meanwhile just sat there, unused. Nature slowly began to reclaim this territory, and by the 1980s, the state of Florida began buying up this land, but the process took quite a while as there were tens of thousands of landowners. By the mid-1990s, the area became a Florida state forest. In fact, it is one of the largest state-managed forests in Florida. Today, all that remains of this failed real estate project are grid-like patterns of roads and canals cutting through an otherwise intact forest. As we would come to learn, this area is very conducive for a variety of species. So what do we got, Tate? So, um, as we're driving down this area, because we're looking for prints, we're wanting to try and, obviously it would be really cool to find mountain lion prints and the ultimate goal, Sasquatch or Skunk Ape. But we found this muddy area and we found a couple bear prints, one here and then another one here. 
Looks like a double step almost, doesn't it? Yeah, double register. Well, no, that might be, you can see those toes really clear on there, yeah. More bear prints. Just walked right by them. Gonna cast these bear prints. That's, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay. Now you want to just start mixing with your hand. Really make sure you get it all the way down to the bottom. Because like, what's nice is that's clear and you can see through it. So you, you want to make sure you flip it so there's no clumps get stuck to any side of the, of the thing. Yeah, I definitely need more. Casting footprints of known animals is not only a good way to practice your track casting skills, but also a way to add to your overall track collection, giving you a frame of reference. Yeah. Go to the toes. Yep. And then just a little bit more in the back. Get that side a little bit. I think you're good. That should be good. Black bear footprints are probably most commonly what somebody might mistake for a potential Sasquatch footprint. The more we know about how animals interact with their environment, the more it can help us differentiate between known animals like the black bear and something truly unusual. One is casted, and we're going to cast. That one there, which has the double register on it, which you can see right there. While we waited for the plaster cast to dry, I explored the immediate area to see what other animal sign might be close by. This little pond, they're definitely gator slide going right into the pond there. I don't know if he's submerged or where he's at, but I haven't seen him around here, but I'm not getting any closer. It was in this spot I placed a trail camera to monitor the gator hole. Oh man, that's... Let's dig around a little bit and get in there. We have a knife. Use your hands pry through that. There we go. Ooh, that looks yeah, like that one came out nice. Yeah, that's gonna be a perfect track, dude. Ooh. How's it looking? Hold up in the light. You can see the toes. One, two, three, four. Nice one, it's cleaned off. That one's obviously pretty muddy, but you can see that uh, pad pretty good. So this whole area was slated for development. I mean, as you can see on the map, the grid in this whole area, basically the way it looks like that. So it's quite strange just cruising around here in the Picayune Strand Forest, seeing how there's these canals that just divide these environments, like the one behind me here. Bigfoot's at the bottom of the food bag. Little inspirational quote. Just sticking to freeze dry tonight. With more roads to drive on in more remote of a location, we decided to replicate our use of the thermal mounted Jeep from last night. We're just gonna sit in this spot, let it get completely quiet, lights off, everything, and maybe in about like five or so minutes, we'll play the sounds of a baby fawn crying just kind of see what happens. Turn it up all the way and just play that. Okay, ready? We'll see how loud it's going to be.
saw, that's about it. Sorry to interrupt the video, but just wanted to take a minute to talk about the 2023 Kickstarter campaign. So I know we have a lot of folks that watch our content on YouTube that may not be familiar with the Kickstarter or even that Small Town Monsters puts out content on other platforms. So annually, Small Town Monsters produces a number of films that come out on Amazon and other streaming platforms online. So basically every year, Small Town Monsters runs a Kickstarter campaign in order to raise money for the productions and basically all the content we create here on YouTube and elsewhere. So with the Kickstarter campaign, there are different levels you can pledge at, and basically becoming a backer allows you to sort of help participate in a way in the creation of all the stuff and there's different perks. A lot of the perks include things like getting your names in the credits of the films, having access to digital copies, DVD, Blu-ray, lots of other things, shirts, even creature statues, things like that that sort of come as a bonus for helping be a part of the campaign. So becoming a backer is really a great way to help support Small Town Monsters and keep us independent, help us produce the kind of content on the topics that we like to produce and really treat the subjects honestly. That for me is a really big one, especially when it comes to things like Sasquatch. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that just isn't really that great that unfortunately there's a lot of embellishment and fakery and we really strive to tell absolutely the truth about the topic. So having the ability to do that with something like Small Town Monsters is a great platform. So if you wanna help produce some of this stuff, please feel free to check out the link in the description below for the Kickstarter campaign. And with that being said, let's get back into the video. So, another day here in the Strand Forest. Last night was a bit of a uh, bust, I suppose. It was just so quiet out here. We saw a lot of deer. It's kind of surprising how much deer we actually saw in the thermal, and there's sign of deer everywhere. I mean, I, there's deer prints all around me, which is a good sign. It tells me there's a lot of good food sources in here. So obviously for panthers, makes sense why there'd be a lot in here. Whatever else happens to be here, there would definitely be food sources. So we're gonna keep exploring in here today. flag to mark our tracks. What do we got here, Tate? There's a couple Florida Panther tracks that I'm going to be casting here. Yeah, we've got a what looks to be a hind paw right there and a front paw, I believe. Got another Panther tracks here, too. They're everywhere. These might even be fresh. I didn't. I don't think I saw these ones last night. But this is a pretty, pretty decent size one right here. Well, we've got today's cast. Came out really, really nice. This one is probably one of my favorites that we got today. Just very clear with the details. And we got a kind of larger cast that's got some movement on it. So that's pretty neat. All in all, not a bad haul. All right. So we're sitting here. Just looking at some of the reports in the area. We've talked about it before, but this whole area is connected basically to Big Cypress, the Fakahatchee Strand Forest. It's all one contiguous area. You got the bears, you got the panthers, you got everything else moving through this area. So as the crow flies, there is a class A sighting, Sasquatch or skunk ape sighting, from 2008, just, I mean, practically a few miles south of here, crossing the road that goes underneath us, which is the Tamiami Trail from Ochopi. And then to the north of us at the entrance of the park, there is a, a sighting from 2009. Yeah, so 2009, so not that big of a time difference. And you've been you're able to find out about a sighting from 2021, also just south of us, right? Yeah. Class A? Yep, Class A. So I think that's interesting that you have these sightings, you have this big forest area where there's a lot of panthers and a lot of other critters. And I mean, I don't know of any stories in, in this interior section. We've been out here and haven't seen many people. And it's interesting that most of these sightings are either at the entrance 
or crossing the roads that are not far here, but it's all an area that's linked. Yeah, and people in town were saying that they don't really see a lot of deer here because the mountain lions or panthers are killing them off. But that's just not the case because we've been seeing a lot of like ungulate prints all over the place. And deer, then, yeah, deer tracks everywhere. And then last night we filmed like three of them on a therm. Yep. And this area, hunting is allowed here, obviously permitted in season. So I don't know. It's just, in, it's, it's really kind of makes you wonder. I mean, there's food sources. There's so much space to move from here to Big Cypress. I mean, we're almost an hour or something out, obviously driving highway to there, but it's not close, but this area is just so vast. It's larger than some U.S. states, and it's all just kind of contiguous wilderness and woods. Yeah, so uh, we've been using the Bigfoot Mapping Project app to locate some of these sightings that are kind of publicly listed. And then using the BFR that I have access to, the flats we've kind of coordinated, and then kind of, you know, we, we confirmed that yeah, these sightings are in the same areas. Yep. Okay, what'd you see? Right here, this palmetto. Um, I don't know if it was the sun or like the leaf, but something took off. Right here? Yeah. Could have been a deer. Oh, there's a deer. It was a deer. Man, I can't believe I noticed that. Good eye. So we're out here by this, this area that's formerly a street that's now flooded kind of pond water areas and coming across these tracks over here. There's a, I mean, what looks like a bare human footprint right here. It's kind of weird. It's like right next to mine. Just somebody was going barefoot here. It definitely looks human though. You can kind of see another one here. The scrunched up toes and right there, right here, you can see that one. Compared to mine, not a big foot at all. But then on the other side, on this side we have some gator slides that are pretty impressive. Look at the size of that gator print. Obviously you've got the tail drag in between. You can really see it coming up here. So these gators are moving up through this area. You got the claw slide right there, right into that print. On this one, you can see gator skin impression. What are you seeing? I don't know. I see some kind of signature in the middle of the field. Oh, oh, I see it moving. It's just distant. So it's big. It just ran off. I think it might have been a deer or a panther. I don't know. I can't really tell. Just drive up there. I thought it was even further, so I thought maybe it was somewhat upright, but it just turned and it turned its perspective and it kind of pointed towards me and was not. Was, was definitely on all fours, I should say. Yeah, it looks like a deer to me. Almost kind of running towards us. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it just, it was so far away, it was just showing up as a white, straight up signature. So I thought, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I just knew it was far away. And as we got closer, I saw it turn. You could see all fours run away. So that's good. At least we know what it is. For a while, we hung out by the edge of one of the old roads, eating some dinner, listening to a podcast, and just hanging out. We didn't film much while there, but had an audio recorder going, which caught this. Dang. Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that? I heard that. Was that you? Shh.
All right, so um, I was standing on one side of the Jeep just with the thermal and, and, and the then monopod, what? and I heard what sounded like a giant tree come crashing down over there, and Tate was doing stuff in the car, so hopefully the audio recorder got it, but it was very loud. It kind of startled us in the moment, and it just, it's up the road from where we are, so, so what did you hear? I heard the same thing. I heard like a, but I was kind of shifting something, and I barely heard it. You thought it was me? I thought it was you. I really did. It was loud, man, and there's no wind at all. Like it's oh my god. Yeah, there was not... a windless night. I mean, okay, so the only thing I could think of that could push a tree down is a bear. Yeah. It's either a bear... I mean, I don't know. It's it. But we haven't seen any bears, but there is a lot of bear yeah. sign. Yeah. So we're going to... Dude. These mosquitoes, we're, we're getting, getting alive tonight. We're getting bit up by mosquitoes like my hands. Night. Should we walk up the road towards that? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do it. I mean, it didn't sound like it was that far in either. Yeah, now should we, should we push into this direction or just keep doing what we're doing? I don't know. Keep doing what we're doing. Okay. Because at this point, something knows we're here. I mean, we're not, we're not stealthy by any means at this no, point. No, we're not, we're not going to be fooling anyone right now. I mean, we haven't been. And this night we're kind of, we were earlier on, we were thinking we were hearing things, but we were trying to act well, nonchalant. Both, we both separately at, di at different points thought we had heard something knock like behind us, behind the Jeep. I, I thought I heard it at first and then you thought you heard one later, which I didn't hear. We both clearly heard this and it could completely be a coincidence, absolutely, but But again, like it's I all just said like a few seconds ago and like what you said, how far can you stretch a coincidence before Yeah, I mean I can't there's no other way to substantiate any of this stuff right now. You know, unless we have something more definitive happen. But it's just uh timing was kind of intriguing. It's a windless night. I mean trees do come down, yeah, I suppose that absolutely could be just what happened and it just freaked us out. But why would it be like after we've kind of been <laughs> it's weird. I mean, it can happen. I'm not going to claim it's 100% skunk ape or something. The one possibility I could think of is maybe maybe something was kind of rotted at that point and it just decided to fall over. That's one possibility. Another possibility is bears. Because I know in Bluff Creek a few years back, I was camping there and then uh, uh, Jamie from the Bluff Creek Project came up to me. He's like, hey, Tate, a bear pushed a tree down. And the prints we've been seeing here, they're massive prints. Yeah, there's some, there's some big bears out here for sure. So it's- Which and, surprised me for, you know, Florida bears have the reputation for being smaller. And I mean, these things were, I wouldn't call these small. If I saw these, you know, in the, in the Appalachians or out West, I'd say, you know, this is a decent sized black bear, not huge, but pretty big. But I mean, compared to the one we saw last year, in Big Cypress, that thing was tiny, that little bear. Yeah. You know? And you know, the other thing is, you know, if that something, like hypothetically, something did push over a tree right now, we haven't heard it move. I mean, I don't know how far in that happened. Again, I can't say anything. It's just a tree fell. That's that's the only, that's the, that's the only say. fact we have at this point is that- Something fell. A tree, yeah, a tree or some kind of limb either fell or was broken off, rotted off, and made a loud noise that startled us. That's it. And the only other thing we know is that we were hearing what sounded like knocks from that direction. Now, obviously, our minds are kind of trying to link those events together, but we have no evidence to show that at the moment. So that's the idea. Maybe we can come back in the daytime and see or something else happens tonight. Aside from that, we just know it was an audio incident, which could mean any number of things. There was three reports from 2021. Um, one of them was literally right behind us. Basically, the closest report, or the closest piece of civilization, there's a marina, there's some houses down, there's a shooting range, which geographically to where we are is the closest piece of human civilization, I suppose. And that's where there is a class A sighting from 2021. I mean, it's a lot for us to drive there now. We'd have to drive out of here and drive all the way into Naples and down. It'd probably take us 30, 40 minutes. So, and that's where that sighting happened. And just to the 
uh, east of there, there is another sighting on that road crossing the Tamiami Trail. Just got to be in the right spot at the right time, really. That's right. what it comes down to. So just because you're in a good area, just because you're in an area with reports doesn't mean they're always going to be there. It just means they've been there. Yep. So. The rest of the night was completely silent. We decided against heading into the area where the sound originated, as we had no idea what it looked like and if it was safe terrain to explore. So we're back in the spot from last night. Uh, basically, here's the area we were in. We were kind of hanging out here, just making some food and hanging out, and then obviously the car was here. Now, I was on this side of the vehicle fidgeting with th the thermal on the monopod, so I was kind of facing this direction. Tate, go where you were. Stand exactly where you were. Yeah, I, was, I was standing right here, but I had the door open and I was yeah. kind of inside the car. He was kind of fidgeting with stuff and then the audio recorder was right up here and the sound of that tree crashing came from up in that direction over there, so. I'd say we should head over there and kind of see if we can find anything or just poke around the area a little bit. Yeah. But this just kind of gives you a feel for the area we're in. Tons of bear prints everywhere here. So we're basically paralleling a bear right here. guys can see I'm basically having to wade through it full fully coming up to my chest and beyond it's so thick you would have heard it It's just so, it's just... The down tree here, I mean, like, the thing. It could be any one of these trees. Finding it in this is going to be impossible. Oh, yeah. It's not, not, not impossible. And that's what's weird, because uh, some of them came and pushed that tree, or... It, it, okay. The thing, I, I mean, think... it still could have fallen on its own. Too. That's what I'm thinking. If it fell on its own, we didn't hear anything run off, so... Because it's so thick, you would have heard it. We're good ways down from the car, but this area definitely is a little more accessible, easier for us to get into as humans. So maybe we can use this to push back a little bit into there. And see what's going on. Well, you know this area, just how much litter is on the ground and everything, it's just be hard to get any kind of track here or anything. But here's a little bit of a kind of path or something we're finding back here. Definite sign of game trail slash usage here. Down sections of the grass. Got the camera propped up on a stump here. Yeah, it's so it's so humid today. It's 73% humidity. But uh, just looking at here on the map where we're at. This is all wood, stretches all the way down to the Tamiami Trail, which we know there's a two Class A sightings. If I were to just go south towards 41, the Tamiami Trail, I would hit the road, the Tamiami Trail, I'd hit the road, and there's those Class A sightings west and east of there, one of them from 2021. So, I mean, this is a corridor 
all these other animals are using it and traveling through different areas, Big Cypress, Fakahatchee. It's just such a vast habitat. I mean, you'd really have to spend a lot of time in here just to even get a lay of the land. I mean, we're lucky to find an area like this where we can actually get through, but that one just to the right of me here is almost impenetrable, just not fun. You can even hear the road back there. I mean, we're a few miles from it, at least, on foot, so. Difficult area to operate in, that's for sure. It's a scorcher today. There's nothing much we could see in there that was of any use, really. I mean, aside from just being able to see, you could walk the area a little bit and really move from place to place. That's really about it. I mean, not a lot. We spent much of the day continuing to drive around. The forest just kept going and going. We realized just how little of it we had truly explored and how much was still out there. So we're now in the heart of this really big tract of woods here. It's just a massive, massive area. It's not divided up by any of the city blocks, but it is really a wild spot. We just had a really good feeling about this place. It was our last night in the area, and aside from the onslaught of mosquitoes, the night was uneventful. At one point I spotted another deer on the thermal, quite close to us. What was remarkable was how it made no noise moving near us through the area. That made us even more curious about the sound from last night. So, we're kind of closing up our investigation with the Picayune Forest. We're actually now, we had to drive all the way through Naples, basically leave the forest and drive all the way down back south to what's called the Tamiami Trail, which goes through this area, Ochopi to Naples. We're actually right now beside the gun club shooting range that we could hear from the southern edge of the forest, but it's, and I'll put up a map as I'm talking about this, how geographically close we are, but we actually, physically having to use different roads to get here, but we have the forest that interlinks this whole area. We know there's a sighting, at least from what's on the Bigfoot mapping project, there's a sighting report of the BFRO just east of here, literally down the road. And there's also a recent report from 2021 from the marina that's across the street from here. People around here say they see panthers and bears all the time coming from the forest. I mean, it's all one contiguous area. So you have a skunk ape report right here and one right down the road and further down the road and it's all kind of one big habitat so i think that's pretty intriguing glad we could check it out from both perspectives but it's pretty crazy knowing how far up in the woods we were and we could still hear these gunshots and the only way to get to it unless you were to hike and swim through a canal would be to drive almost an hour around just to get to this very spot I mean, this area is definitely interesting. A lot of potential habitat, a lot of cool creatures out here. So I don't see why skunk apes couldn't move through these areas and utilize them. See if we get anything, I guess, you know. And, oh crap. <laughs> Can you hold this for a second? <laughs> it's either some lunatic redneck or some crazy hippie. Or some pot farmer. So I think our plan now is to uh, walk out of here with lights on and hopefully something just gets aggravated at this and just yells at us i don't know I just want something to happen <sighs> it's cold right. It'd be worth it if something happened we'll see are we walking but like when you're in the mountainous region like, oh god that scared the out of me. <laughs> the you shadow of the shadow of the palmetto oh. from your light that like, cast this made it look like there was something walking in front of me <laughs> Just one of those like corner of your eye kind of things where you're like, oh, geez.
Oh god, nice camera. Okay, Alex, so what just happened? My heart sank. I dropped, I left the, I left the handy cam. I must have put it on here. As I was setting up this GoPro earlier and we left and we're like half an hour away. I'm freaking out, I couldn't find it and it was here in the road the whole time. Thankfully nobody drove by, but, oh my God. But when you have two people to collab, co corroborate, Collaborate. Collaborate. It's clobbering time. To col I did it again. Just restart. Just redo. <laughs> Do take two. Take two. Sorry. Take two. So I kind of like the mess up. So it just makes it feel more natural. But one B shot one take three. Hold on. Sorry. Ready? Okay, we're good. All right. Thanks.